Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you how to paint green goo. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to today's painting video. And like I said in the intro today, I'm going to show you how to paint green goo or green slime, just like you can see they're coming out of Brog's Cauldron from Gatefall. Now I have absolutely no idea if anyone will actually find this video useful or not. I've been painting for a few years now and this is the first time that I've ever painted green goo or slime, but I thought, hey, I'm painting it on Brog, so might as well turn it into a video just in case there is someone out there that will find it useful. But the reason that I ended up painting it on Brog here is because sticking out of his cauldron type thing there that you can see are different body parts and limbs and bones and things like that. And then in the actual texture of the cauldron, it looks as though some sort of a liquid is running down the outside. And so I thought, well, I wanted to paint it to look as though there is some sort of a liquid that all of those body parts are sitting in that's gradually dissolving them. And so I wanted it to look as kind of yuck and gross as possible. And I thought, well, green is going to be the best color for that. And so that's how I ended up painting this green goo slime liquid sort of stuff. So as I explain what I'm doing here, I imagine that you could take the process that I go through for any color. You would just swap the colors out for whatever would suit the colors that you want your goo or liquid or slime to be. Now, when we're painting some sort of a slime or liquid or something like that, the main thing that we want to do is make it look wet, and if it's wet, it's going to be reflective. But the main thing that we need to consider when making something like a liquid look reflective is that it's not actually a flat surface. As it's flowing, it's going to be curved. And so to make it look reflective, we need to paint it as though it is essentially a cylinder. And if you look here at these couple of cylinders with light bouncing off of them, we don't see the entire surface being hit by light. We only see the light that's coming from the exact angle that's then making it to our eyes. Basically, all this means for us is that when we're painting the reflection on our green goo or whatever color you're doing, we're not going to cover the entire surface area. We're just going to paint a thin reflection straight down the middle of each individual stream of the goo, I guess we'll call that. So we just need to make sure that we lay down a nice dark base coat so that as we paint the reflections running straight down the middle of each stream, we can have nice dark lines around the edge, but then go really, really bright in the middle. So to base coat all of this green slime, I used peacock green, which is my absolute darkest green. And that was, so like I said just before, as I start to add all of the reflections in, we have a really, really nice dark edge to each stream, which will add that really, really good contrast that we need to sell the look that this liquid is reflective. And then from there, I'm just gradually starting to work with lighter and lighter greens to start to paint in the reflections. So for the first layer of the reflections, I moved from peacock green to viper green. Now viper green is one of my mid-tone greens, but it's still very, very saturated. So it's quite a vibrant green. But as I painted in that first layer of the reflections, I didn't just paint one smooth continuous line straight down the middle of each stream. I wanted it to kind of look as though it's thicker in some spots and thinner in others. So it's not just one smooth stream, it's kind of blobs its way down a little bit, I guess, for lack of a better term. So I painted some individual lines. As you can see there, I painted some shorter lines and some longer lines and kind of left some gaps in between just to make it look like above each of those gaps, it sort of blobbed up a little bit and it's a little bit thicker. So there'll be a reflection there, but underneath each of those thicker blobs, there won't be a reflection. So I haven't painted anything there, if that makes sense. But the important thing here though, is that as I did that first layer of the reflections, I only painted a thin line down the middle of each stream, just to make sure that the peacock green could still be seen down the edges, the left and right edges of each stream. So then from there, I moved to pale green, which is just a lighter green than the viper green. And I repeated the exact same process as before, but I painted an even thinner line straight down the middle of the viper green line. 
So now we're able to see a pale green line down the very, very middle, then some viper green around the outside of that, and then the peacock green on the outside of that. And so it just starts to make the center of each stream look more and more reflective. And then just as a final touch to really, really boost the contrast and sell that reflective look, I'm just finishing off with some very, very small dots of white. So these are just going at those spots in the flow of the green goo that I've painted to look its thickest. So at the bottom of each of those individual lines where I want it to look as though it's gooped up there and it's a bit thicker because those spots where it's sticking out, that's where it's most likely to catch the light. And so those are the spots that are going to look the most reflective. So yeah, it's pretty much now just a case of going around and just at the bottom of each of these thicker looking spots, just putting a little white dot very careful to make sure that it is quite small but the main purpose of this is just to boost that contrast between the brightest part of the reflection which is this white part and then the darkest part of the green goo which is that original peacock green base coat and so just as I start to finish off these reflections, our green goo is finished. Now this is the first time that I've ever painted it and it may be the last time, so it's definitely not perfect, but I think the effect is more than convincing when Brog is in the middle of the table because this goo liquid-like substance does look reflective. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos, even if you may never paint green goo yourself. Hopefully there was something in here that you can take away and use in your own painting, or just at the very least you just enjoyed watching it. If you did, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up, as well as hitting that subscribe button. But that's going to do us for today, so until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting everyone. Cheers.